Hello everyone, we've got Bob and Linda with us and uh, as you can see, we're at the PBL corridor. This video is about how do you do your year 2 off ski at G40. So without delay, we'll start the process on the day. You'll be asked to come in and what do you do the first thing? Yes, you wash your hands. And then uh, we'll lead you to whichever circuit you're supposed to be. You could be in this circuit or the next one. Uh, in this video, we're actually going to put you at the last one where you have beautiful views. So there's another circuit. So when you get there, first of all, you don't look at the station content because you have to wait for the all ski to officially begin. So you'll be standing in front of the door facing away from the content and the proctors, people who, who does the examination will actually be there to look at, uh, to make sure that you're on the right spot. And when the station start, you will actually hear an announcement coming from the speaker saying, students start reading. So when the announcement start, that means you have got two minutes to read your station. And as you can see here, Barbara is quickly reading the station and writing down notes on, uh, on, her, on her board so that she can use that inside the station. So the clinical scenario says that you are a third year medical student on an elective placement in general practice. Your GP supervisor asks you to see the next patient, 56 year old Alice Bennett, who has presented with chest pain. And this is the first time she has been to this GP practice. So the task also make it really clear that uh, at six minutes, you have to provide two differential diagnosis. So you would know that you have to do that. So then we'll just have a look at what the station is like now. So would Barbara and Linda please come and join us? So as you walk in, you can see that the assessor will be sitting here and this is where you wash your hands and this is where the simulated patient will sit. There is always uh, a scenario on the whiteboard where you could actually read and refer to when you need to. So you will be sitting here and having the conversation with the simulated patient while the assessor assess you from behind. And when it's the six minute, you'll be interrupted. Uh, the assessor will say you have two minutes um, remaining and please present your different shows and your reasoning. That's when you actually turn around and face the assessor and then report your findings to them. Okay, so we're going to go back out and start the station officially again. That's it. Welcome back. So at the end of two minutes, you will hear this announcement coming in saying, students start stations. Students on the now station remain where you are. So that's when you go in and we'll start the station here. Hello, Burping. 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 You know, that's, uh, okay. that's 
So you mentioned angina. So mm -hmm. have you have a history of heart disease? Yes, I had a heart attack three years ago. All right. And mm -hmm. how's that treated? Um, well, two stents. Two stents? Yeah. And how often do you get angina? Oh, probably about once in three years. Okay. So only the once? Only the once, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, any other problems with your health that we need to be aware of? Oh, look, just general ageing. I, I, probably my only thing to complain about, I've got such osteoarthritis, it's, that's been playing up lately. Okay. Um, more than it has. Right. Okay, all right. And have you had any surgery at all? No, I understand. Any travel, long, no. long travel anywhere? Okay, all right. And you say that your osteoarthritis has been playing up. Are you taking any medication for it at all? Oh, yeah, I've been, been taking a lot. Neurofen is what I normally turn to, and I've, I've been having up to six a day. So more neurofen than yeah. usual. Any other medications that we need to know? Um, after the heart problem, I've been having a, one of the small aspirins mm -hmm. in the morning, and I take a beta blocker twice a day. Right. Uh, I don't, can't tell you the name. Okay. I keep changing it. Right. Any allergies to anything that you're aware of? No, no allergies. Okay. All right. So, um, anybody in the family with heart disease? Mm -hmm. Both my parents died of heart problems. My dad, uh, he had a heart attack uh, in his 70s, and mum had a stroke in her 80s. Siblings? Um, yes, I've got two brothers that I believe they have heart problems, but um, I don't keep in contact okay. too much. And children? Children, I've got two sons, they're well. Okay. Mm. And, and who's at home with you? Nobody. Okay, no, so like, where's mm. Mr. Bennett? Um, yeah, we had a, a nice time together, but unfortunately he passed away just before I had my heart attack. Oh, okay, right. So you're on your own? Yeah. All right. It's a bit lonely. It is a bit lonely, yes. So how are you, how are you coping with that? Um, oh, look, it's hard. I just try and keep myself busy from mm -hmm. the garden. It's different. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Do you drink alcohol? Yeah, I look, I wind down the end of the day with a couple of glasses of wine with Emma. Okay, do you think you're drinking more alcohol than usual? No, no. I right. just, yeah, just have a couple. It's been such a routine. I'm do you smoke? No. Have you ever been a smoker? No. All right. And I ask this of everybody: Are you or do you take any party drugs at all? No. I don't. No. All right. Okay. So, um, you've got no pain at present. No. All right. Do you feel that you get short of breath with this pain at all? No. Do you feel sweaty with this pain at all? No. Do you feel like you're going to pass out? No. Any nausea or vomiting? No. Any palpitations, heart beating irregularly at no. all? Okay, what about any ankle swelling at all? No, no it's just that burning pain. Just that burning pain. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And this is, well, the first time you've had it was like a couple of months ago. Not, not had this before. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've had the odd burning pain that I just thought was food related, but, you know, I, I guess I've had it constantly now. Okay. And it's getting worse. All right, okay. All right. Um, is there anything that you're particularly worried about with this pain? Well, apart from the fact of taking my um, sleep, okay. um, I think I've got another heart attack. All right, okay. Well, certainly we're going to have to sort something out about this so that we can see what the cause of the pain is. Um, you're new to the practice, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, so we'll have to get some more details from you in regards to the rest of your health and, and, and all of that. Um, so... You have two minutes remaining. Okay. Please present your differentials and reasoning to me. Okay. Um, so um, this is Mrs. Bennett, and she's coming with chest pain. I think the two things I want to talk about are because of her chest pain, and it got better with the angina spray, and her past history of heart disease, and her family history of heart disease, you want to rule out that this pain was cardiac related. So that would be the one you'd want to rule out. But I think the one that's probably more likely is some sort of either reflux or um, gastritis because the pain is burning and it's got no other associated symptoms with it. But she's been taking more neurofin, which is an anti-inflammatory, which can 
cause gastrointestinal upset. So I think that that's the one that's possibly more likely that fits in with the, with the timing. So I think that those are the two things I want to talk about is chest pain because it could be heart related or it could be gastrointestinal. As you can see, Barbara finished her clinical reasoning at 7 minutes and 20 odd seconds. So for the remaining time, the students can always use the time to go back for more history. And what we find is when you do a reasoning and explanation, you actually identify find gaps in your history taking. So there'll be a good time to go back for that. Or you could use your two minutes or in your differential diagnosis and reasoning. So that is our demonstration of how a eight minute year two OSCE station will work. So thank you to Barbara and thank you to Linda. Hello everyone, we're back. So now we're just having a wrap up or a debrief about what happened and why did it happen that way. So uh, Linda have some question for Barbara. Okay, Barbara, I might just start with, um, I'm curious to the first, I guess, strategy for students is, is what, what do we do in the reading time? So can you help step us through sure. what you did? Okay, so you read the station and you look at the task and you do the task. It's a very simple task, don't overthink it. So if it says take a history, that's what you do. So you look at the stem and you look at the page, you look at the patient's age, you look at their gender, you look at the presenting complaint. And then around that, you always start to think about what could be the potential causes for this person's problem. And I would do it in systems. Is it cardiovascular? Is it respiratory? Is it gastrointestinal, for example? And you go from the ones that are going to be the most serious to the least serious. And then the other thing I do is I just write down a template. So Socrates, PP, family history, social history, meds, allergies, just as a reminder of myself to not forget to ask any questions. And then that will take up your two minutes. And then when you get in there, you can do what you would normally do, is wash your hands, introduce yourself, explain what it is that you're going to do, and then start. And you start with an open-ended question, maybe another one, and then you start getting more specific about whatever the symptom might be. You need to pay attention to the content of the uh, answers that you're getting from your simulated patient. And then based on what you get, you then start asking the other symptoms, systems questions. So for the rest of the cardiovascular one, you would have asked about palpitations, you would have asked about ankle swelling, um, all that sort of thing, you would have asked about shortness of breath. Um, for the um, gastrointestinal ones, you would have asked about you know, reflux or you know, those sorts of system questions. So don't ask all of a sudden, you know, neurological questions because that system has really no relevance to this patient's information that you're getting. So if you start asking those sorts of systems questions like, you know, endocrine or gynecological, then you're not actually clearly thinking about what the information means that you've already gotten from the patient. So when you're doing the systems questions, you have to take into account the information that you've already been given on the history of the presented complaint, on the family history, the social history, the medications, allergies, etc., before you start then deciding what other systems you are going to ask questions about. And if you just start to ask everything and go generally fishing, me as the examiner will probably mark you down because as far as I'm concerned, you're not demonstrating that you've paid any attention to the information given and you are not employing any clinical reason whatsoever to try and figure out what is going on with the patient's current problem. So if I were to summarise you, Barbara, so what happens is read the task, think about it, write down your ideas and what the structure that you want to do. Yep. You've got two minutes to do it. Go in. You execute the structure, follow the patient's narrative, start thinking about the information, integrate it together, and then you take a systemic history that is relevant to the presenting picture. Yep, so absolutely. Linda, do you have anything else to add? Um, probably, especially because 
that I was playing the SP role this time is, as Barbara was saying, if you go fishing, there's, a, there's that one part where you could potentially be seen to be very checklisty. Um, and warmth is part of your assessment as well. So that would have come across. Barb did a nice agenda set. She told me that she was just going to ask a few things. And, and because even as, as the patient, they seemed relevant, that would impact warmth and clarity um, in that part. And you know that's not what I'm known for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do. So uh, anything else that you'd like to add? No, don't overthink it, guys. Keep calm and... You'll do fine. Actually, I do have one more thing, is don't get hijacked by the, a history that you're not asked to take, because my character we just played today has a little bit of loneliness as a, as a person who's lost her husband. But Barb managed that. She didn't discount it, but she didn't let it hijack the six minutes because you don't have time. Okay, so we're not here to trick you guys, okay? We're not here to make your life difficult. We're reasonable people. We thought about it when we designed the station. So just take your deep breaths, read your tasks, and do what you're asked to do. Okay, so good luck. Good luck. And have fun.